Mark, Mark Islam is, is the incumbent Republican state representative since January of 2023 for the 9th Norfolk District. The 9th, the 9th District covers the towns of Plainville, Wrentham, Norfolk, Walpole Precinct 5, Millis, Precinct 1, and Medfield Precinct 3 and 4. Marcus lives in Wrentham and is running against Democrat Kevin Kevin Calcutt for of Norfolk. This is a repeat of their race in 22. Marcus attended Syracuse on a full athletic scholarship and received the MBA, MBA from California State University, Monterey Bay. Welcome, Marcus. Thank you, Peter. Very uh, happy to be on with you again. It's good to have you. Um, what what inspired you to run for state representative in in twenty two? Yes, so it was kind of a kind of like a perfect storm, Peter. Um, I had actually set out to um, be a school committee member. Um, there was an open position, and at the eleventh hour, um, I was kind of you might say almost a shoe in because no one else was really stepping up to the plate at the eleventh hour. Uh, previous state representative of Ninth Norfolk, Sean Dooley, had decided uh, to put his name in the hat for uh, the Senate seat. And uh, a couple of people had come up to me and, and said, hey, let's hold your horses a bit. Um, you may want to consider this other position. Um, so I actually you know, took my name out of the uh, running for school committee and uh, thought about this potential uh, position for a couple months, and you know, it, history, history will uh, you know tell you you know what happened from there. <laughs> what do you consider your top ac accomplishments as state representative uh, now that you have served for two years? Yeah, so um, you know, it's kind of you know when you're when you're first uh, you know enter into the into the state house as a new legislator um you know you kind of have you kind of drinking from the fire hose um so not knowing anything about really public policy and kind of getting my bearings straight um you know i did a did a lot of uh you know um a lot of educational series uh within the state house and uh regional governments um kind of get my bearings straight but I'd say the the biggest accomplishment thus far um, is bringing bringing you know funds back to our district. Something of what which you know out of 24, 25 new legislature legislators in Beacon Hill, I was able to bring back uh, the most out of all freshman legislators and even some of my you know House Republican colleagues. Um, you know, my, my business background, I think, uh, was well noticed in my negotiation skills, uh, during the first budget season. Um, and it was noticed bo both by, uh, you know, leaders of the house Democrats, leaders of the house Republican caucus. Um, and that's what elevated me to the prestigious, uh, house ways and means committee, um, which, um, if some of you guys know, that's, that's, uh, you know, where, where, where we, kind of decide where our, our state budget is allocated um, through all the facets of, of our government. So um, I think that was, that's been the big greatest accomplishment uh, so far. And I look to continue, um, you know, being on that committee, serving on that committee for the future. Upon re-election as state representative, what would, what would be your main priorities and how are they important to the ninth Norfolk district. Yes, uh, some of my main priorities uh, at the moment, uh, we, we've had a lot of recent discussions with with um, senior citizens in the area, um, the cost of living, keeping people here in Massachusetts in their homes in ninth Norfolk is extremely important. Um, so we've been doing a lot of research, uh, outreach with, um, Councils on Aging, senior centers, uh, to get things flowing in the right direction. Um, 
have some alleviation of taxes um, within uh, the towns and cities, the 351 towns and cities, and, and working with my colleagues to make sure that uh, our citizens, are, especially our senior citizens, are well cared for. Um, we have a severe housing shortage, um, you know, just kind of realizing new, new avenues to build uh, economic, economically um, positive uh, housing uh, within the area. Um, and looking at, you know, state run sites, state owned sites to kind of expand on that housing inventory is particularly important. Um, one thing that we've been tasked in, in this district uh, uh, with the uh, crisis of, um, you know, migrants coming to Massachusetts and the recent opening of Bay State uh, Correctional Facility is making sure that uh, the governor and the executive office uh, stay true to their timeline of the 12 months that it will be open. And, you know, further beyond that, making sure that that facility, since we have invested so many tax dollars into that facility, making sure that facility is useful for the citizens of Massachusetts in the future. The part of mental services, DDS is looking for me for housing now. They're looking for me for a home, but no one's come to look at me as of yet. So yeah, and I and I know that's that's an important issue as well. Actually, my myself and my legislative aide Rob Tugas, who um, you know you've obviously met um, one of yeah. one of the best legislative aides around. I think um, we recently uh, met with some constituents in Millis um, around this issue um, with you know people with uh, developmental. Um, you know, needing developmental support and the lack of housing, the lack of beds. Um, and that's that's a true, you know, crisis that we're seeing here in Massachusetts as well. Um, you know, caregivers are not able to, you know, give their children or their, you know, the people that they love um, suitable home and, and yeah. services. And, uh, you know, that's something that we're going to be diving into. I, I you know, we, we've had some situations in the past where constituents have come to us looking for housing. Um, we had never really had a situation where, uh, you know, we had this, this complete uh, level of outreach as of recently and hearing these stories uh, really touched our heart and uh, we are committed to making sure that um, we, we work with our colleagues to try to come up with solutions for the future. And, and housing, the housing crisis with me is a, a cause a thing to me very deeply in my heart. So, yeah, and I, I would love to. I would love to continue those conversations with you and kind of uh, give you some insight into what we've learned uh, these last couple of weeks and what we're planning, you know, for the future. Because I think it's really important from people like yourself that has experienced, um, you know, some of the hardships. Uh, you know, through the lack of housing and support services, you know, that we take, you know, your experiences into account when we are, when we are looking to, uh, you know, make change. What, what do you think are the biggest problems in Massachusetts government that need to be addressed? Yes. Yeah, so um, I think the biggest issue right now and, and something that I'm very passionate about and working with our state auditor is uh, transparency on Beacon Hill. Um, you know, there's a lot of closed door discussions, uh, you know, late night votes that aren't recorded, um, money flowing out the door that we as, you know, constituents, as citizens don't, um, you know, traditionally agree upon. And, uh, you know, we are in dire straits. We, we, we are, uh, you know, our budget uh, for fiscal year 25, 26 is, uh, it's on the decline. We, we, we do not have, uh, you know, appropriate funds to get through some of the stuff we need to get through um, as far as our roads and bridges, um, you know, funding our schools properly and funding, you know, critical programs here in the state. So it's, it's very, very important that we open up dialogue, open up the doors of, of Beacon Hill and can see exactly how we are spending our tax dollars um, and how we can allocate those dollars to the appropriate programs, uh, you know, for the future. So that's, that's what I am uh, really driving, you know, home at this point. Um, and, you know, I'm sure you go into the ballot question, which I, I 
you know, very much support. I, I was one of the top co-spot co-sponsors, co-signers on this ballot initiative with our state auditor. I think it's very important um, to make sure that we have transparency in our government and here in Massachusetts. So, so you must know Diana Desergio. I, I, I do. I, I speak with her often. I just had a conversation with her on Friday. Um, you know, she's doing a great job getting out to the public, uh, letting everyone know, uh, you know, about this critical question ballot initiative. And, and I think, you know, with her, you know, with her feedback and my feedback, uh, you know, knocking on doors over the last few months, I think most people understand, uh, you know, that we are one of the least transparent states in the country. And, um, you know, I, I, I truly think that this, this ballot initiative will be successful in November. She's interested in being a guest on my show someday, uh, the auditor, Diane DeSergio. Yeah, she she would be a great guest. I'm sure she would love to love to do an interview with you. I met I I had the honor and the privilege of meeting her at the at the state convention. Oh, great, great. She's a wonderful person. Yes, she is. The state legislature is dominated numerically by Democrats. Do you have any examples of how you have worked successfully in a bipartisan way on an important issue? Yes. So, um, you know, many different examples, but I, I'd say, you know, um, you know, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty exemplary that we, we can work together, you know, just next door in Walpole, we have four representatives uh, uh, between uh, Paul McMurtry, John Rogers, uh, Ted Phillips, and then our state Senator, Mike Rush, um, you know, we're in constant communication on, you know, what we can do to, um, you know, help the Walpole community. Um, and I think we've been very successful in some of the initiatives that we push forward and uh, the money that we brought back to that community in particular. Um, you know, I've worked with uh, many members of uh, the Democratic uh, Caucus uh, to push forward uh, important legislation, um, most specifically uh, regarding uh, firefighters turnout gear in the removal of PFAS uh, chemicals in that turnout gear. Uh, I was instrumental in setting up um, a district uh, uh, tour of uh, a company called Detrapel in Framingham and worked with the state reps there uh, to set up that, that uh, district tour with other colleagues of mine on the Democratic side. Um, and you know, I think, I think that kind of collaboration is very important uh, to make sure that all of our voices are heard um, on, on the state government side. Do you have a favorite ballot initiative of the five on the ballot and why? And is it is it your favorite? So so a favorite, I, I mean, I guess I'd have to say, you know, the ballot initiative uh, regarding the auditing of, of the state legislature. Again, uh, you know, like we talked about, um, I was one of the uh, co-sponsors, co-signers of that initiative with our state auditor. Uh, you know, I, I always pledge for transparency, and I think it's very important. Um, I think that's where we need to head in the future uh, of the Bay State to make sure that, you know, all of our constituents uh, throughout the 351 cities and towns know exactly what's going on on Beacon Hill and behind closed doors. Um, so yeah, I I would say that that's that's probably my favorite uh, ballot initiative and ballot question. You have a ballot initiative you think is a bad idea and why? Um, I would uh, say uh, the ballot question concerning the hallucinogenic uh, drugs. Um, again, that kind of goes hand in hand with. Um, the approval and use of, of marijuana substances. Um, I, I just think, you know, looking and working with law enforcement, we still do not have ample testing procedures available, especially for our public safety staff, um, for people utilizing these drugs, especially when they're operating heavy machinery in vehicles. But I think before we, you know, uh, allow this, um, you know, there's got to be, you know, more pertinent uh, safety measures put in place, uh, you know, for the public safety, so. I recently participated in a conference for disability advocates. 
we discussed we discussed housing and tra and transportation as as important policy issues for people with disabilities. Do you have contacts within the community of disability advocates to help with policy decisions and initiatives? So again, uh, like I had stated before, um, we recently, you know, held a roundtable myself and Robert Tugas, uh, my legislative aide, um, with uh, two parents and uh, three um, individuals, um, you know, that have gone through, uh, you know, housing difficulties and lack of services um, in this department. We've also spoken to other constituents over the last two years. Um, and this is something that we have as an initiative uh, in, in our second term to make sure we, you know, uh, consistently um, provide roundtables, uh, you know, for our constituents to help us through uh, new policy initiatives uh, for the future to make sure uh, that that community is well cared for and they're getting everything that they deserve. Who has endorsed you? uh your re-election as state representative yes so um we've had quite a few endorsements i think i've i've put out uh at least uh 14 endorsements so far and i have many more to go i actually don't know how i'm gonna put out all the endorsements because there's a you know we only have so much time before november 5th but um some of the um some of the best endorsements that I've had thus far is uh, Mass State Police, Mass Coalition of Police. Um, I've had uh, a couple of local um, uh, endorsements from Erin uh, Greeny, a uh, school committee member, uh, the chair of the Norfolk uh, Public Schools, uh, Lisa Sheldon, um, just trying to think off the top of my head, uh, Brian Kelly, select board member chair in Plainville, Joe Botash, select board member chair in Rentham, uh, had the uh, Correctionals Officers Association as well, um, Babson College Republicans. Uh, I'm just trying to think uh, who else uh, here. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. A, a couple of the of the local unions, the the uh, plasters and cement local uh, five thirty four uh, union endorsed me, um, as well as the uh, northern northern union, uh, northern New England union, as well. So, um, what are your favorite activities outside of work? Favorite activities is uh, definitely providing my time to the youth of the community. I think it's very important. Um, I've been a longtime coach uh, ever, si ever since I uh, graduated college. I've gotten involved in the community in that aspect, whether it's, you know, coaching track and field with the high school over in North Attleboro. I've coached uh, high school track and field in King Phillip. Um, I've coached, you know, a lot of the youth sports with flag football I'm now coaching uh, tackle football for the seventh grade team. Um, so I'm always, uh, I've always been a part of, you know, youth, youth athletics and youth coaching. I think that's extremely important for the next generation, uh, you know, to have, uh, you know, strong leadership, uh, in the community and, and, uh, kind of see them, you know, through the future in a positive manner. So. I, um, I play, uh, basketball, especially needs adult team called, the Newton, called the Newton Celtics for Mark Kelly's group for Newton Park and Rec. Okay. And we start up, we start up in uh, January. Nice. <clears throat> maybe, maybe sometime during the winter, you could, you, you and Rob could come now and see us play sometime. I would love that. Uh, you'll have to send me the schedule. I, um, before I decided to run for state rep, I was playing basketball consistently on two on Tuesday nights at our at our local uh, elementary school with a bunch of you know people in the area. Unfortunately, uh, you know, with the amount of work that I have on my plate, not able to do that. But I would love to get back into it. I'd love to see you play um, and and your friends. So 
definitely keep me up to date on on the schedule for the winter and and Rob and I will definitely try to get I'll, out. I'll have my dad play. send it to you. Great, great. Um, can you summarize why you should be reelected as state representative for the North Norfolk district? Yes. Yeah, so, uh, you know, like I like I said, I think I think transparency is is a um, big part of why I am uh, looking to become reelected. I think I've done a good job throughout my first term as far as making sure that the constituents of Ninth Norfolk know exactly what's going on on Beacon Hill, um, making sure that they know that I'm working for them and for their voices, and I will continue to do that. I think it's extremely important, um, you know, as far as a democratic process to have different voices of opinion on, on Beacon Hill. And as you know, uh, you know, out of 160 member membership in the House of Representatives, there's only 25 uh, Republican caucus members, uh, which doesn't really, uh, you know, give credence to, you know, making sure that there's a wide array of voices. Um, you know, I've, I've, I've had, you know, some colleagues on the other side of the aisle that really believe, it, you know, that, you know, we should have, uh, you know, more differing uh, voices on Beacon Hill, um, you know, for the for the um, process of, of making sure that the people, um, you know, have their voices heard. So I think that's extremely important. Um, and I would I would, you know, ask uh, the people of Ninth Norfolk uh, for their re for their support in my re-election campaign in my second term, uh, and I will continue to to work hard for them uh, in the foreseeable future. We want to thank Marcus for appearing on Special Times with Peter Flo, so we plan a similar interview with Kevin Kelkite. The election is coming up on November fifth. Early voters are always sorry. Please vote. Goodbye. <laughs>